definitely had some intense visual progress on our building site recently. The first milestone we reached was the subfloor. We finally went from a forest of dead trees to flooring that resembles the foundations of a house. Before the last flooring sheet was delivered to site or the bearers were fully secured to the piles, we received the invoice from the building company, defining it as substantially complete. Richard is quite the perfectionist, so he easily picks up issues and mistakes, but communication with the building company hasn't always been easy around them. Our new project manager is more approachable, and we have been practicing patience to see the solutions to issues we have raised. The subcontracted team of builders are genuine hard workers, and it's impressive to see what they achieve on site every day. We never expected such leaps of progress after the long drag previously, where the foundations of the house took five months to complete. In just a day, nearly all the frames were standing to form the rooms of the house. Having frames is such a big milestone and certainly one we've been excited about for a very long time. We've finally gone from staring at a two-dimensional plan to standing in actual rooms. It also helps us finalize the lighting and electrical layout we'll be doing ourselves. One thing we noticed is a missing beam for the cantilevered deck. From the plans, this should have been inserted under the upper floor above the lower floor framing to have the weight of the house supporting it. Apparently, it's now with the engineers to find a solution. A shorter deck would compromise the best elevation view of the house and due to the easement, we can't have any support going down to the ground. Let's hope the beam will appear soon. On the garage front, things didn't go so smoothly. Early last week, the tray deck was meant to be installed, but the subcontracted company never showed up. Another subcontractor ended up taking it on just before the council inspection. We're not sure what exactly happened with council though. I phoned them directly and they told me the inspection failed. But the project manager assures us it just required another meeting over the bearers of the garage and it would be poured on Thursday. Yet, after this council meeting, another inspection is now needed and the pour delayed again. The bearers of the garage are actually a great concern of ours. Originally, they were meant to be steel and we're not sure when it was decided that they could get away with timber but we would have at least expected them to be treated at a minimum H3.1 for exterior use above ground, exposed to periodic wetting since these beams are exposed to weather on the sides. Instead, the bearers are treated only H1.2 for interior construction, suitable to a maximum of 18% moisture exposure. These bearers provide structural stability and are difficult to replace, so the Department of Building and Housing defines the requirement for them to last 50 years. The manufacturer of the beam states they require flashings to protect them from any wetting. Yet our suggestion to add these flashings was shut down by the building company's design manager. We're unsure as to why they would try to cut corners on such essential materials for the build. Hopefully we'll soon have a lasting solution for this. And at the moment, we're waiting for council to inspect these bearers under the garage. The house is continuing to progress quickly. And roof trusses have been going up. Being on a tight budget, we opted for one gable and a raised angle of the roof for the upper level, which will be the most visible part of the house. In the next few weeks, we should get the garage built and a roof on the house, so we look forward to these exciting milestones coming up soon.